Now to a Fox 59 crime tracker alert. Two people are in critical condition this evening after a double shooting at the Lake Castleton Apartments. That's on the northeast side of the city. Fox 59's Russ McQuaid walks us through the history of violence at this complex and has reaction from fed up residents. There's a sign out front that says there's new management at the Lake Castleton Apartments, but the neighbors tell me the old problems of crime and violence still persist. It's kind of crazy on Easter Sunday. One man was found wounded out here in front of 7778 Newport Way. Another fled the scene and was discovered nearby on Shavelin Avenue. Last New Year's Eve day, someone was murdered in this very same block. This is like the second time there's uh, a death done happen or a shot done happen by my apartment. Security, they was here like after the last shooting on uh, New Year's Eve. They was here and um, it was here about probably a month, a good month. And then I ain't seen them ever since or nobody's seen them ever since. Last summer, a man was shot as ministers were conducting a neighborhood peace walk several yards away. In the spring of 2021, a young man was murdered at Lake Castleton Apartments, and two months later, a woman was stabbed to death by an intruder nearby. Neighbors don't like becoming accustomed to... And this is not really a bad neighborhood, because look how spaced out the, the, the crime is, you know, over the course of several years, but that's... That would be a fucking decade in, like, a glider neighborhood, right? Well, and a change in management isn't going to change the people living there. <laughs> management is not the cause of the criminal activity that happens on the property. Yeah, he doesn't he doesn't get that, man. And I get why he doesn't get that. I mean, he's a son, man. He's been told that the problem, that the solutions are exterior. You know, all the solutions come from, from outside. So with the Deluxe 247, a.k.a. Cal Ripken, a.k.a. the real MVP, coming through once again. To violence in their community, said one resident who fears retaliation if she's identified. These murders are too much and it happens too frequently and everybody is sick of it. They're scared. I don't remember when it was, but for like four nights straight, there were gunfire. They voiced their concerns, but nothing is ever done about it. No securities, and if the camera's not working, shoot. For a killer, you know, that's an easy and a better way for you to do something. You know, if a camera's not working, nobody can see you. And if nobody's not going to talk, you know, it makes it all easier, too. It's sad, you know, on Easter, a shooting. And that's just very sad to me. Like Castleton didn't necessarily have any security on duty today during the time of this shooting. However, it did have a maintenance worker who told us his boss told him to kick us off the property. At Lake Castleton Apartments, Russ McQuaid, Fox 59 News. <sighs> Listen, man. These people are hopeless, man. Um, oh, here we go. We got a solution. Here's a solution. We finally found a solution, everybody. But well, gun violence has led one Indianapolis man to start a new mentorship a league for kids. Kareem Hines is the founder of a new breed of youth development, or New Boy, a group focused on mentoring boys in Indianapolis. New Boy created a league called the Playing for Peace Youth Sports Fellowship and Community Service Project. Hines says they're looking for boys from 6 to 17 years old. The flag football season starting in just a few weeks now. We're trying to get young people from all over the city, from the ages of 6 to 17 years old, engaged in sports, but also teaching life through sports. A lot of our kids in this city are going through a lot of trauma right now, and they need a release. What do you guys think, man? Sports. Uh, mid midday midday flag football man for well, the new take on midnight basketball. <laughs> uh, I think it's another gathering where shootings will take place. It's just a band aid. I don't even know if this is a band aid. This is like your mom kissing your boo boo. And shit. This is like rubbing dirt. <laughs> inside the wound because you have no band-aid yeah salute to doug g man he says 
I, I I didn't believe it could happen, but I think I like the rap that rapper talking about his hair more than those lady athletes talking about their terrible struggles. <laughs> talk about some the, the rapper the other day was talking about licking his girl from be licking his butt. Oh shit! Now and they need a release. Yes. We'll go ahead and skip back just a bit. Yesterday was the first day for registration, but next Saturday from 12 to 2.30, there's another chance to enter that league. This is just a part of our connection. We want to connect with these young people in any way we can. Not only our young people, but their families, which is why we have the music, we have the free food. We want this to be like an old school block party kind of vibe. For the next two weeks, registration will be open, so you can find that information on how to register at fox 59com Salute, man. Salute to that brother. I mean, there's nothing you can do. <laughs> These are, I don't think the kids that are show up for this are the kids that are doing the crime. You know? So he's, it, it doesn't help, but, I mean, I guess he gives the kids – that aren't doing the crime some um, um, something to do, some more activities to do. Um, Two brothers connected to a quadruple murder on Indy's northeast side in 2020 have been sentenced to 220 years in prison. Fox 59's Kaylee Schuyler spoke with two of the victims' mothers who say this news is bittersweet. He has always been happy. I kind of think we rely on each other. Oh, this one is my favorite. He, he like wearing suits. Kimberly Roberts and Kendra Ford only have memories left of their sons. This is the picture that I love the most. Jalen Roberts and Braxton Ford were both killed in February of 2020 in a quadruple murder. The other victims shot and killed were Kamari Hunt and Marcel Willis. Friday, two... <laughs> just look at this shit. Hey, these four were just killed in one, one foul swoop. Uh... If every murderer got these kind of sentences, we wouldn't have a murder problem. But look what it took for them to get that type of sentence. They had to, they had to go four for four. List. Friday, two of the shooters, Cameron and Desmond Banks, learning their fate. 220 years is a lot of time, but it does not bring back the lives of our children. Police say the two brothers and two other suspects, LaShawn Watkins and Rod Reese Anderson, ransacked an apartment on the northeast side after shooting more than 50 rounds, fleeing with duffel bags full of stolen items and cleaning out a safe. The brothers facing life in prison, but the mothers say two wrongs don't make a right. It's sad having to face the perpetrators, knowing that they were young also, and they have to spend the rest of their life in prison for something that they had the choice to do. Anderson is up next on Monday, April 3rd. In a plea deal, he confessed to police that he was a getaway driver and waited in the car while the others went inside the home and killed the four victims. LaShawn Watkins will be the last to learn his sentence on April 28th. Now, our kid's life has been taken away from them and we can't see nor hear them again, but you guys have to go face being locked up 23 hours a day. In Indianapolis, Kaylee Schuyler, Fox 59 News. Both moms are urging parents to make sure you know what's happening in your kid's life. And Jeez, make sure your kids aren't operating a drug spot. 